This is a code enforcement. This is a code enforcement hearing for the city of North Miami. Today is um, June seventh, June nineteenth, two thousand nineteen. I'm Christopher Benjamin, special magistrate for the city of North Miami. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property, as observed and cited by a code enforcement officer of this city. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I'll dismiss the case and you'll be free to go. These proceedings are being recorded. Therefore, all persons who are speaking should do so one at a time to ensure that all testimony is clearly audible on the recording device. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when your case is called and we have some interpreters that will assist you during your proceeding. When your case is called, the property owner, agent for the property owner, or any witnesses that you may have should come forward to the podium on the left side of the room when asked, please speak directly into the microphone and say aloud your name, your business or mailing address, and your relationship to the property. If you're not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you're going to need a power of attorney in order to speak on behalf of the property owner. Uh, for new cases, you'll be asked for the record if you are aware of and understand the violation that is being heard today and whether you understand what is required to resolve that violation, so please answer accordingly. The city will present its case first, and the property owner will be given an opportunity to testify on their own behalf, to bring forward witnesses to testify, to present evidence uh, and photographs, and to cross-examine the city's witnesses. <coughs> Following the case presentation, I'll issue a finding of fact on the case, and if I find that a violation of the city code exists or existed at your property, then depending on the case type, I'll set an abatement date for the violation to be resolved, or for repeat violations, I will impose a daily fine amount. For new non-repeat cases, my order is going to include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. If I find sufficient cause to postpone enforcement actions during these hearings, then I will table that case to another hearing date in the near future. If you do not agree with my findings of fact, then the property owner may appeal my administrative order on the case to the circuit court being in Dade County. This is the Miami, this is the 11th Judicial Circuit in and for Miami-Dade County. An appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the execution of my administrative order that is going to be appealed. In accordance with Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decision made by this special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need a verbatim record of the proceedings. This record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. The cost for obtaining the verbatim record shall be the sole responsibility of the appellant, and it is recommended that the persons who plan to appeal their case should provide their own court reporter at these proceedings for expedience issues. Pursuant to the city codes, if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before this special magistrate, the city shall be entitled to recover all costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment amount is $100 per case. Now, once the city records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien against your property, then the city will charge an additional fee to record the release of that lien. So if you're going to be giving te testimony today, please rise and raise your right hands to be sworn and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Stay standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, if there's no uh, additions, deletions, or corrections to the agenda, uh, call your first case. <coughs> The first case is Daniel Pomeratz, case number CEGMP 2018-00433 was postponed to August. Case for Daniel Pomeratz, CEGMP 2018-00432 is postponed to August. Call Cassandra next. Theok, case number CERCV 2019-00045 is complied. Case Jules Cadet, FYBRR 2018-00092 has complied. Greek Ortho Church, K 
case number FYBRR 2018-00007 is postponed to August. Greek Orthodox Church FYBRR 2018-00022 has complied. Roddy Richards, CERCV 2019-00058, ownership has changed, removed from calendar. Jesus Gaetan, CERCV 2019-00049, was postponed for 90 days. And that concludes all the amendments to the agenda. Call your first case. Civil Violation Ticket Appeal, Matthews Real Estate, CTTRA 2019-00005. That case has been uh, postponed to a later date. The first ticket appeal case that we have is from Marie Mazepas, case number CTBPR 2019-00073. Who's here on behalf of this property? Come forward. Ma'am, uh, go ahead and uh, make your appearance for the record, meaning state your name and your address and your relationship to the property. My name is Mary Mazepas. Oh, my address is 115 Northwest 121 Suite, Miami, Florida 3168. I'm the owner. Okay. Uh, you received the traffic, uh, traffic, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what you, that's what happens when you wear way too many hats. Mm -hmm. um, you received a citation for violation of uh, the city code with regards to an issue con uh, existing on your property. Uh, this is an appeal of that citation. Are you still uh, contending that the citation was not issued properly? Uh, I got, um, Are you still objecting to the ticket? Yes. All right. City? I can get my witness to please state your name for the record. Jose Perez. And Officer Perez, on or about... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just, just briefly because it's hit me. Can you just give me briefly why you're, what, what your objection is? My Egyptian for the ticket? Yes. Oh, uh, can I have somebody to Creole? For Creole? Yes. Uh, matter of fact, uh, all the interpreters, can you please rise? You shall swear or affirm that the translation which you are about to give in this proceeding will be accurate and correct to the best of your knowledge, skill, and ability. Thank you. All right. So, ma'am, you're objecting to the ticket, so I just want to know um, what's the basis, quickly, what's the basis of your objection? It was given to me correctly. I, I would just like for it to be dismissed because I do not have the money to pay. It. Okay. See, when my spotted senses tingle, you know, uh, it's always for a reason. All right. We, I can't dismiss a ticket just because the person doesn't have the ability to pay, because then everybody in this room will be like, I can't pay. So. That's not a basis by which I can dismiss the ticket. However, I can give you some, uh, well, actually, we can't give them any more time. No, uh, um, you do have discretion in the amount of the court costs or the, the fine that how, you how, how much was the ticket that was issued? The original ticket was $500. And what's the violation? It was for enclosure of a rear porch without a building permit. And have they obtained the permit? As of my reinspection, no. Okay. All right. So, in order for me to do something for you, you got to do something for us. You got a violation because you didn't have a permit for uh, enclosing the back portion of your property. 
So now you got to do what's go. Now you got to get what's called an after the fact permit. So you still got to get a permit even though you've already completed the work. Okay. So, in order for me to even consider reducing the fine, I got to know that you have done what's necessary to resolve the issue. Okay, I'm happy to do so. I've already gone and gotten the application to get on the way with that. Okay, so uh, even though the city, they don't like when I do this, but I'm going to reset this so that you have the time to do that. So come back to me on um, come back to me on man, I'm not here. How long, how long do you think you need? I do not know how much time the city will give me because I've already gotten the application and Monday I'm going to submit it. Okay. So come back before me on July 17th and let's see if you have done everything that's necessary. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. We will be moving into new business. The first case is Richard Thompson, CERCV 2018-00196. Shanna Sanders is the officer. Is anyone here on behalf of this property? Yeah. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Uh, I'm Richard W. Thompson. I'm the owner of the property. Okay. I didn't have a vested interest, but I sure do have one now. <laughs> I, I remember you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, sir. All right. So, where are we at today? Is this, is this the same violation or is this a new violation? It's the only one. All right. That's why, that's why I'm asking to make yeah. sure. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Code Compliance Officer. Um, same violation as you stated. This is a case for the recreational vehicle that's parked on the side of the property. As of last Wednesday, the variance still hasn't been obtained, and the boat still remains parked on the side of the property. Has it been applied for? Uh, I have the application, sir, and uh, I was going to apply for it, but. Uh I've got the boat up for sale and the house, and uh, uh, I have a guy in Homestead that wants to put it on his property for a uh, um, uh, sale there. I might get more money out of the boat. I've had the boat since 1988. Um, I previously adjudicated this matter, right? Um, yeah, I did. I you didn't. Uh, there was another uh, um, uh, mag special magistrate, Your Honor, mm -hmm. that, was, that was here. Uh, it's just a deluge of rain. I need to pop the boat up on the driveway. I need to take the wheels off and check the race and the bearings and pack them. And then I can safely take it down the road. Uh, his lot is, is underwater, three foot underwater. We've had a deluge of rain every day. I still have to make my bills. And uh, so, so I've so been working one, to do that. So which, one, which one are you going to do? You're going to get the variance or are you going to remove it from the property? I, I think because the variance is not transferable to the new owner of the property, mm -hmm. right? And uh, they said that I can have a boat of any size as long as it's 10 feet from the road and 2 feet from the property line, which is what it is. It's, it's, it meets up to the code of that. They were kind of leery of it because it's been 12 years since they passed this variance. And they're coming to me now. Well, the statute of limitations are most things are seven years. So uh, in that respect, you know, 
it's kind of like an old old thing that's been going on. It's the only violation I have right now, and and the only one I'll ever have again because I'm leaving. So I mean, uh, I think what I should do is uh, is get with my real estate agent, say, hey, let's let's sell this now. And if you can't, then I'm going to go to a guy that's what we call market buyers. They buy your house for market value, which is what the county says your house is worth. And, um, you know, it's summer. Um, I have a home in, in Michigan. I just soon go back to. So uh, I think what I'll do is, uh, is I'll, if I'm staying, I'm going to fill out the variance. We'll get it done and, uh, and give you the $293. That's what they require over there. They, did, they had to look it up. They, they weren't so sure that I, I really required one either, that I could have been grandfathered in. So uh, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I either move the boat or uh, I'll get the variance right away. I've got the forms here, and uh, the neighbors, they don't care if the boat's there or not. No problem for them at all. To answer so. your first question, um, Magistrate Benjamin, yes, you adjudicated this case at the April 5th hearing. Um, you gave him until last um, Wednesday to um, secure the variance, apply for the variance in order to remove the boat. I think I think that's I think that was enough time. So well, uh, the thing is, it's the rain, sir. If it's not a deluge of rain all day and night long, uh, the boat would be moved, or the variance would be. Uh, after all these years, that I need a variance for it anyhow. But uh, the variance would be obtained. Yeah, I can go over there and obtain it today or tomorrow. I mean, not not a problem. That's not a problem. I can do that. But the. Uh, the problem with it all is, is that it's not transferable to the new owner and that uh, I don't want the boat uh, to use it anymore anyhow. I haven't used it since uh, 2007 and uh, I don't see where it's hurting anybody anyhow. Um, I've got pictures of boats in the neighborhood. They never heard of such a variance. Uh, right today I even took quite a few pictures. All right, but, so um, I, I heard this case in April. Well, I'd, li I'd like to I'd like to comply with you, sir, right now and just get get it over with. All right. Sure. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. So, uh, let's make that happen within the next 30 days. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. Thank if you. not, the fines will go forward. Yeah. OK. No, I'll get taken care of. Thank you very much. All right. Have a nice day, sir. You too. The next case is a B. Tedla. Case number RCCOR 2017-00004. Gary Beswick is the officer. Yes, my name is, <coughs> my name is Abib Tadla. <coughs> Property address uh, 485 Northeast 131st Street. So you've been made aware of the violation, correct? Uh, yes, I... Are there any objections to the violation? Yes, well, I... You, you're objecting to the violation? Yes, no, I'm not objecting. Uh, the reason why we stayed this long is because the violations are very expensive. I inherited this problem from the previous sellers and... How much, how much they, time the, do you need? Well, no, right now we do... We, we ha I have the fund uh, on the 12th, which is seven days ago. They released the fund. As of now, uh, we already have... I know you uh, want to want to give me permits. some. I know you want to give me some background to it, but it's yes, kind of no, it's no, kind of it's kind of cut and dry. You uh, have no objection to you have no objection to no, the, sir, to uh, the, to the thing. You need more time. Tell yes, me how much time I, yes, I so I can tell you if I can give it to you or not. Yes, sir. I just need about a month or two because we already have submitted the plan All to right. the city. All right. And we're just waiting, spending run. As soon as we get the f the the permits, we're ready to go to work. Got you. So, you said about thirty days. Uh, but. 60 days to the most, 30 will do. We, we, we're starting this week. Okay, I do not know how long the inspections. <laughs> all right. I'm going to give you a little bit more, okay. all right, because um, I'm back here in September. So um, having heard the testimony, evidence presented. Uh, it's not a new case. Oh, it's not? No. Oh. All right. September 18th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gary stole my thunder. The next case is Three Horizons East, case number CENUS 2019-00187. Shanna Sanders is the officer. Good morning. Danny Weber, the attorney for the Condominium Association. Is this a new case? 
This is a new case. Counselor, has your client been made aware of the violation? I was just made aware of this now, yeah. Does your client have any objections to the violation? No, we're just asking for time to, uh, to achieve compliance. How much time? If I can have 60 days, that would be great. September 18th. Find that a violation does exist to cite it. Issue an abatement date of September 11th. If not abated by September 11th, then it's $250 per day until abated. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. The next case is Gustavo Lorenzo, CESEA 2018-00001. Shanna Sanders is the officer. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Ernesto Santista. I'm, I'm the contractor on records for Gustavo Lorenzo. I think since web page crashed. Um, is this a new case? No, no, it's an old state case. Still compliance? No, not yet. How much, uh, how much time do you need the, to get the compliance? I, I, I think 15 days at least is what I'm going to need because this is the last uh, plans that was submitted to them. Um, happened that the person that need to approve today is the last day of vacation is supposed to arrive today and then approve and then I came back to here with the application where it's already here, fill it up. I think next week the payment is going to be on process. July 17th, or the fines go forward. Okay, sir. Thank right, you thank very you. much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. The next case is Ernst Felix, RCCOR 2016-00005. Gary Beswick is the officer. Is this a new one? Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Uh, this is an on, on, ongoing situation. 17. All we need is more time. We have the contract on the job. Any objection? Oh, okay. No. How much time? How much additional time do you need? We've done a lot of work on the property. Uh, maybe three months. All right. See you back on September 18. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. The next case is Venice Lane. There are four cases for this customer. The first case we're going to hear is MHVIO 2018-00354. I'm sorry, everyone. There, if there is a white pickup truck that parked in the city attorney's spot, it's about to be towed. Anyone driving a white pickup truck? Okay. So we'll move forward with Venice Lane's case. Okay. I'm sorry, number what on the agenda? I'm sorry? Number 18. Uh, number 67. They have four cases. 67. Oh, you like it? Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Yes, my name is Paul Shapiro, uh, USA Management. And George Mejia, manager of the union. All right. He's the president of the association. All right. You guys have been made aware of the violation, correct? Yes. Are there any objections to the violation? Uh, no. How much time do you need? None. Everything has been done. Vanessa Willis, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. Um, there are a total of um, four violations that were written on the property. Um, we'll start with three five, the one that ends in 354. They were cited to repair or replace the self-closing gates and locks on the pool. Um, also pressure clean and paint the pool deck and surface. And as of uh, June 12th, they were not in compliance. So if, if they are in compliance and they have photos, they can show me. But on June 12th, they were not in compliance. Yes, they were scheduled uh, to be done by a vendor and I had spoken to Vanessa and told her that it was done 
It turned out when she called me back that they weren't, but the following day they were all corrected. We have pictures of the gates, the self-closing locking gates. Most vendors don't want to come out to do a little job. I hear that. You know? Mm -hmm. Seems like there's a market for that. A small job handyman. Yeah. Seems like, seems like there's a growing market. Okay, don't move, <laughs> don't leave me. Okay, Special Magistrate, um, he's showing me photos to where the, um, the locks have been replaced, but I would like to go for myself before closing it. So if we can do 30 days on that one, or if you wanna right. just continue. July 17th. Okay, um, the next one is to paint the building. There's one, okay. So, so the next case on record that we're gonna speak about is MHVIO 2018-00355. Uh, Your Honor, yes. there were two areas. Uh, let me explain something. This is a 20-unit co-op, and it's underfunded. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Vanessa yeah. sent me pictures of two areas that had to be repainted, which yeah. were done. Okay. Yeah, but you see now it's exactly. smoothly closed. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So it looks like you need an opportunity to go and check the violations again, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Say it again, Special Magistrate. Sounds like you need an opportunity to go and check these things again for yourself. Yes, since they're stating that they are in compliance and my last inspection, they were not. Um, yes, I would ask for. So here's what happens. I'm gonna reset it for July 17th, but if compliance happens within that time, then it won't come back before me. Right, it's all been done. I think one of the other violations was the parking lot that had okay. to be resealed and striped. That was the other one. Yes. Um, I wasn't aware of that, but we received um, the final proposal from Southern Asphalt Engineering, which I have here, and uh, George will be signing the contract today, and that will be done as soon as they can schedule it. All right, so we have, we, okay. we have it reset for July 17th. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We need to call each Was there case one more violation? Record? Go ahead, call, you can call, the clerk can call each case into record, mm -hmm. but the, the magistrate's ruling on each case that will be announced is that it will be reset for July 17. Okay. So MHVI 2018-00357 has been reset to July 17. Case number MHVI 2018-00358 has been reset to July 17. The next case is Larry Jean. Well, I thought, excuse me, I thought there was one more violation. There were four. We just called four into record. Oh, okay. Yes. The other one was for the extermination. So if you have the report, you can just send that to me or show it to me. Well, That's fine. the extermination for the building was tented. Okay. I have the, the printout. The building was the building was tented by Bug Free Services, and the final payment was made on November twenty eighth. Vanessa, here. Okay. 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 Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next case is for Larry Jean, CEGMP 2019-00009. Jose Perez is the officer. Um, Larry Jean, uh, the residence is 155 Northwest 127th Street. North Miami, Florida, 33168. I'm the owner. All right. You've been made aware of the violation? <coughs> well, the situation with the violation is um, it was a combination of a lot of things. Do I think this isn't the first you, time. Do you understand the violation? I understand it, yes. And do you object to the violation? Uh, no. How much time do you need? Um, due to the rain, maybe a, another 30 days. All right. Um, 
This is new, right? Uh, this was previously adjudicated, but I'm fine with giving the 30 days. All right, July 17th. I have a question. If sure. um, complied and um, fixed, uh, is there a fine for it? If it, if it's complied, you know, if I if I you know comply with um, all the repairs, I know it's, right. it was That's brought up last no. time. No. Okay. All right. Thanks. The next customer has two cases, Terrell Matthews. The first case we're going to hear is CESOD 2019-00016. The officer is Jose Perez. Go ahead and make your appearance. Terrell Matthews, 17120 Northwest 18th Avenue. I own the property at 12065 Northwest 2nd Avenue Investment Property. You've been made aware of the violation, correct? Uh, yes. Is there any objection to the violation? Only one. Uh, they want me to uh, replace the grass on the swale uh, because of parking, but no one parked on the swale, and the grass is never going to grow on the swale because it's under a tree that's provided by the city. Well, that's part of the violation. Uh, there's also a part where you have to replace the grass on the lawn that was damaged due to the parking as well. The grass on the lawn was, there were some tenants there, they are, there, they are no longer there, and um, parking on the, on the lawn came from a pre, uh, previous mm -hmm. owner that put a lot of pavers in the yard. The whole entire front yard is covered with pavers. I have to remove all the pavers before I can plant grass there. Is there any objection to doing that? No. All uh, right. How much uh, time do you need? Say 45 days. Uh, July 17th. That'll be fine. All right. Well, it has to be done by July 10th. Um, right. So, finding a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of July 10th, not abated by July 10th, and it's $250 per day until abated. Okay, one question. So now in the swell area, I don't have to put grass there. Do I? The uh, code does require for there to be grass on the swell area. But it won't grow because there's an olive tree that's covering that area. It doesn't get sun. So put, put this... That's the why there's no grass there now. Put the sod there, and if it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, so put some sod there. It may grow. It may not. But I think that's unjust because we don't park there. It's not because we're parking. It's, it's, that's not fair because... Listen, the yes, code okay. requires the grass to be on the, on the swell and makes it the owner's responsibility to do that. So it's not really a matter of whether you're parking there or not. The fact that there's no grass there and it's by code is the property owner's responsibility to maintain that area. So as you're putting some sod on the on the lawn, throw some sod over there too. Uh, that's a cost to me, and I think it's unfair. But I will comply, you know, just to save aggravation. But it's, it's not a. It's, it's, I feel like it's unfair. It's not going to grow. It's a waste of time. But your honor, I'll, I'll comply. Thank you. Next case for Mr. Terrell. Mr. Terrell, you have two cases. The next case from Mr. Terrell Matthews is CEWWC 2019-00039. The, the officer is Jose Perez. The, car, the carport. Okay, yes. A any objection with regards to repairing the carport? No problem at all. All right. Same time? Yes, sir. All right. July 10th, not abated by July 10th, and it's $250 per day until abated. I understand. Thank you. All right, thank you. The next case is Grenoble, Louis June. The case number CEGMP 2019-00051. Edme St. Louis is the officer. Pilar, are these all under new business? Are these all, all new? New cases under no. new business? No. I just I just put them there depending on which customer came in. So you have the customer signed in. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a new case? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Grenoble Lujin, 1545 Northeast, 139 Street, North Miami, Florida, 33161. Okay. And have you been made aware of the violation? Uh, do you understand the violation? A few days ago, yes, you I do. You understand the violation? Uh, I, even though I'm objective to what is going on now, uh, <coughs> first, make the story short, the... The tree from the city. Before, before we tell the story. Yes. Are you objecting to the violation? Yes, sir. Okay. City. 
Good morning, um, City of North Miami Court Officer St. Louis. This violation is for general maintenance of the front porch. And I've made numerous contact with the property owner and as well as the son of the property owner. So the son is fully aware of the situation. Now, as far as for the property owner, I remember speaking to a group of elderlies that, that stayed at the, that resigned at the property in Creole, making sure they understood what they needed to do. So I'm not sure why he's saying he don't understand the violation. Because this has nothing to do with no tree. It's for this the front porch. This is to porch. obtain a permit for the maintenance of the front porch poles. Yes. Okay. Uh, firstly. Do you need, do you, let me ask this. Do you need an interpreter? No, no, I don't. Uh, okay. I, I understood. Uh, just want to make sure. Yes, I, I understood. Uh, firstly, you said you spoke with my son. My son is only six. Uh, that will not be relevant. Um, I'm so sorry. Le le you can just let me finish. See we, if we can comply. Well, let me let me let me try yes. to keep us on track. Yes. The front porch has some poles that need to be maintained, and you need a permit for that. Okay. Because you need to maintain those poles. All right. Have those poles been maintained? Have you done that? No. Um, do you think you shouldn't have to do that? I would assume yes. I would assume yes. Okay. I would so, assume yes. Presumably, uh, the reason I was uh, studied about the tree, the tree fell uh, onto my house, mm -hmm. the, the city tree. When I, when I came to the city, they told me it's happened uh, by the nature, so there's nothing they can do. Now, uh, the reason does that, that... Does that have to do with the front porch? Yes, uh, because everything was broken down from, um, from the city tree. So now, I would, comp I would comply, but the thing is that because the city denied to do it, now I'm going to my insurance to adjuster. Uh, it just, the process just started. It's going to take a long, you know, little bit of time for me to come, not even to comply, because it's not only the thing that I need to fix. To fix it, I have other job to be done. If I have to do it right now, it's going to be a problem for me to do the other things. I'm, com I'm trying to see if everything can be done at the same time. But to adjust the and insurance, is, you know, it's taking a little bit of time back and forth. I can see what I can do. I'm truly uh, uh, responsible for, you know, uh, I live in the city for years now. I want to do it, but the thing is that um, it's kind of uh, Listen, tie on me. We'll, we'll do our best to help make it the, mo the easiest for you to comply. Yes, please. But understand that one part has nothing to do with the other part as far as the city is concerned with compliance. Okay, so we want you to comply, and we want you to we want to help make compliance as easy for you as possible. But you also have to understand that there are time situations to these things. There are time limits to these things, yes. and the city wants compliance as soon as possible. Yes, okay? I, I understood so that issues with insurance. I know people always come before me with issues with insurance and things like that. Those things, this magistrate are not allowed to consider or should not be considering with, in terms of compliance. Yes. Okay? Because it is the property owner's responsibility to comply the best that they can. Yes. All yeah. right? M may I say something? Okay, Your Honor, if you go, it's visualized. Okay, on the, you, if you see the pole, on the top of it, it's messed up by the city. So now, to do it, I have to do the top first, then do the, the poles. It, it was... It, it's, I, yes, it's messed up. It's, it's it's messed up by natural occurrence. Yes, yes, I understood a, that. A but natural, the city denied. A, natural, a yes. natural occurrence made the prop, made the tree fall upon your house. That's right. By by law, that's the that's the property owner's responsibility. By law. Okay. The case law has is clear on this point that if if a if a tree falls on the on someone's property, the the property owner with whom the the the, the tree has fallen upon. It's their responsibility to, to handle that situation. Oh, yeah. All right? Yes. So I'm going to give you till September 11th. All right? Okay. Let's see where we're at. All right? 
Okay. So, uh, Your Honor, uh, I, I would ask, would you mind if I can have like within six months? Because b within six months, be because I have to go to adjust and everything, insurance, to see if I can comply. Because I want what? to do it too. It's not like I don't want to. I want to do it by complying. But it's not sure I understood that the city will not do it. But if I have to do it, there are, thing, there are other things that I have to be done. With that being said, I'm, I'm complying. I will contact her. I will, you know, whatsoever. So let's do, three months, let's do it three months at a time. Okay. So I find that a violation exists. The society issued an abatement date of September 11th. Not abated by September 11th. Then it's $250 per day until abated. So what will happen is that on September 18th, you'll come back before me and tell me what's going on. Okay. All oh, right. I, I'm fine with it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. The next customer has two items on the agenda. George Dotzler, the first case we will be hearing is MHVIO 2018-01257. Gary Beswick is the officer. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. I'm George Dotzler. I'm the owner of the property. Are they, you've been made aware of the violations, correct? I received a notice. Are you aware, are you aware what's wrong? Uh, there's an allegation that I built a floating dock, which I did not. So. And there's a complaint about a seawall. Okay. So you're objecting to these allegations? Uh, this, the floating dock has been there as before I moved in. Right. But there's some things as it relates to property this is a, uh, that runs with the property. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Of myself and my son. My son is 18 now. Right there he's like two and a half years old. And that's on the seawall. You, you inherit, when you buy Sir, property, you inherit, th you inherit things that, that go with the property. Sir, hand it to him. He'll bring it home. All right. So, if if a floating dock is part of that property, and it happened to be installed without a permit, you when you bought the property, you inherited that problem. Well, then I would ask, what is the proof that it was installed without a permit? That the city can't find a permit for it. The city can't even find plans for my house. Was my house built without a permit? You want that citation? This, it's, it's absurd, Your Honor. I mean, the city has two records for my home, a screen enclosure and a re-roofing. Okay. The screen enclosure is long before me. It was in the early 90s. Okay. I did the roof in the late 90s. Okay. And there was nothing else in my file. Okay. I didn't empty the file. Is I there a floating dock that's connected to the property? Yes. And it's okay. been there since before I, when I moved in, it was old. I repaired it but I've never so you've taken on it so you definitely have taken ownership of it correct yes it's my floating it's, dock all right and it was done without a permit so that's I, where we're at now I I've had the city tell me to repair it okay. years ago and I repaired it okay and they were fine with that abatement okay. and now he's telling me that it was done without a permit I don't understand you guys don't even remember the things you've done in the past that's right, Gary, you guys <laughs> don't remember things that was done in the past. I'm an objective third party. <laughs> He's saying that you don't have a record of a permit and it was there when he bought the property. No, I pulled some planks and I replaced some planks. I mean, it's not a major repair. You know, the, a rotten plank, you pull it out and you put a new plank. Was he previously, was he previously cited and made to repair the floating dock? Yeah, yes, he, uh, a couple of years back he did. So why wasn't the permit required at that time? I don't know, I wasn't the officer that side him back then. So I have no idea. But I've been here for many things, many times. About four years ago, I came here and I objected to the red light. Uh, I was testifying against the red light cameras. The very next day, code enforcement officer came to my house and found half a dozen things, dumb little things. 
but I complied. And it's been, ever since then, an ongoing hostility from the previous code enforcement officer. All started the day after I objected to the red light cameras. I'm a civil engineer. I studied traffic engineering. I spoke about the red light cameras that you're supposed to have a two second reaction time and one mile, per, uh, one second per 10 miles per hour. The red light cameras here only had one second per 10 miles an hour. So if it was 30 miles an hour, it had three seconds. It should have had five seconds. And that's from the national standards. You know, standards are policy, not law, right? There's standards for stop signs. Everybody complies with them. And the law says that- There's actually laws The law the says that a stop sign has to conform to the standards. Okay. So anyway, I came and I testified. Got you. And the next day, I was accosted by the city. And it's been ever since. One thing after another. Now, with respect to the floating dock, it's been there I don't know how long. I, I could not tell you how long. <coughs> I can only say that it was old when I got there. And when the city asked me to repair it, I did. They looked at it and said, oh, great, and we went on. Uh, they never accused me of building the floating dock before. And, and, it's, and I can tell you with absolute certainty, there is nothing in my file except for the two things I stated, a screen enclosure done with a permit and a roof done with a permit by myself in like 98. And, and that photo is, is my son when he's like two and a half years old. Actually, he brings up a curious objection. What if previous owners actually did obtain a permit for that floating dock, and somewhere along the line, the city, who has the obligation to keep the records for a period of time, has misplaced that those rec the records of that. Whose burden is it to show that a permit was obtained? The property owner. And, and basically, um, unless, let me, this is, I'm Gary Bezik for the city of North Miami Building Department. This, this came from a complaint, basically, started by Amanda Hartnelli from, from North Miami Police Department, which was sent over to the building department to Vicky Santos, and basically, which was sent with some photograph. And the poor photograph that I have, actually, he picked the dock was recently redone. So I'm not sure what happened to the original dock, but the photograph that I have, surely, um, newly, and I'm gonna show it to him, then I'm forward to you. So, so just, so Mr. Besby, just so I, I get your point. Your point is that he's, he's done enough work on this that this, this dock is basically redone, has been redone. Yes, it's, it, it, once he touch it and do some work on it, he need permit. I don't know, a permit was pulled for the original dock, but the current dot that's, that's the dot that's there was, was, was redone. And once you touch it, you have to pull the permit so you can get the inspection. Okay, you understand? I, I object because the city has no idea what was there. And the picture I'm showing is one little piece of the dock. Okay. Now I'll admit that the dock was at one time uh, 68 feet long. It is now considerably smaller. I cut, I cut off a bit from each end and discarded it. And I repaired the, the loose planking from the remainder, and I put, I did paint that surface. Sounds hopefully like, so it would last longer. Sounds like you did some work on the dock that changed it from its original structure as well, thus needing a permit. I, I guess you work for the city. Yes. Yes, I have a floating dock. I I can't see what that is, but I have a floating dock, yes. And I, I'm not objecting to the fact that I have a floating dock. I'm telling you, it's been there a very long time, and I, I don't see that repairing some planks and painting them requires a permit. I mean, am I, do I have to pull a permit to caulk a crack in my driveway? Depends on how long the crack is. 
how significant I mean, the crash it, it, Again, I object. The absurdity of this, the city needs to be able to prove that I did the job without a permit. And it needs to prove that it was not there when I moved in. Actually, it doesn't. As, as, as you've heard, the burden to prove that you had the proper permit. So now I have to prove that my house was done legally because the city has no records. Do you, again, do you want that? Is that a citation no, that you're they're asking absurd. for? No, because it's absurd. Don't you see the absurdity of it that the city has failed its responsibility and now you burden me with it? No. What I see is that you, you inherited a dock. You made significant changes to the dock that would have required you to get a permit. You didn't get that permit. So, yes, go get a permit. All right? Because I haven't heard the testimony evidence presented, finding that a citation was properly issued. How much time do you, do you need for that? I, I would rather deal with the whole issue of the seawall and the floating dock together because okay. you can't okay. get a floating dock now, okay. not without doing it as part of Durham and the, the um, seawall and everything compounded together. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the seawall. So my new seawall will be... Um, um, I need to call that into record. Oh. You call it. Um, Hold on, we, we need to call the actual case. First. Okay. Go ahead. Madam Clerk? That case is MHVIO 2018-01258 for George Dotzler in reference to the seawall. All right. Go ahead. Tell me about the seawall. Okay, so I've been working on the seawall. I've, I've done survey. I've uh, been to Durham. I have plans. And I, I haven't been able to find a contractor that wants to build the seawall I want. Um, to, to explain that, imagine that, that this little bastion here is uh, my pool uh, foundation. And this little space on each end is the seven and a half feet up to my property line. The center there is 60 feet. My property line is 10 feet beyond that. Functionally right now, the, the pool, this foundation is acting as a seawall. And um, the, the existing uh, high water mark uh, is like a curve in and then along the base of that wall and then a curve out again to the other seawall. So it's sloping down. And um, I would like to plant mangroves along that wall with the exception of a ramp down to the floating dock. And you can't get anybody to build no, that No, no, no. The thing I wanted would be to build like a, like, you know how the castle has a, a bastion on the corners? I wanted to build like a bastion in each corner coming out to the, to the property line. And then in the middle, I wanted to have the seawall lower. So the seawall would go across, down, across, up, and then across. And in that way, these areas could stay high and the area in the center would be as low as legally possible. I'm willing to give that up. I'll make just one seawall mm -hmm. across the outside as low as it can go and I'll deal with the crenellated portions as retaining walls directly with the city and not try to involve Durham or a, a uh, seawall contractor. I initially wanted to put pilings up against the sea, against the pool wall thinking that it might be a problem but I see it's not moving and it, it's unnecessary expense so I, I do have plans and how much and how long will it take you for the those plans to you know, come to fruition I, I have no idea it, it's been a terribly long time but um, so so I have general notes, I have my survey, I have uh, something, a page that shows the existing conditions. So let's start out Here's with Here's my soils report. I did a soils report, I, I forgot about that. Let's, let's start out with three months. Here's my, my section, and, and the thing that I want to change, so this all, this existing stuff is all fine, but what I want to change is the plans for the seawall, which start on the sixth page. And I'll just make a simple seawall, and hopefully I can find somebody that will build it. All right, so let's start out with three months, all right? I'm so it'll be September 11th. Okay. 
find that violations do exist as cited, issue an abatement date for September 11th, not abated by September 11th, then it's $250 per day it, until abated. Look, it cannot be abated in, in that what time. What will happen, what will happen is that you'll come back before me on September 18th and you'll tell me about the progress you've made thus far. Okay, what I will promise is that the new drawings are done and sealed by an engineer. I will promise that I will get a, cur a uh, drywall, uh, excuse me, a seawall contractor's contract by that date. And then I don't and know apply when for the, the job will be done. And apply for the, the permits for the floating dock. I, well, th that will be part of the, the whole thing. All right. Thank you. Okay. Case 01257 was found guilty with an abatement date of September 11th, fine set at 250. The next case is DRJ Holding, case number MHVI 02018-00923. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jerry Mann. I'm manager member of DRJ Holdings. And we saw you a couple months ago. Yeah. For a building permit. Did we take care of it? Took care of it. Right. Mr. Bagwick. Didn't think I was going to survive it, but I did. No. <laughs> Mr. Beswick, is this, is this? It's comply. Thank you. Case dismissed. Thank you. The next case is San Susi Condos. The case number is MHVI 02019-00039. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good morning. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Spaldo Calzada. I'm the secretary for the association. All right. And you guys have been made aware of the violation, correct? Yes. It's not a new case. So do we, this is for permitting for uh, floor rafters inside unit number three. Yes. Were we able to get that done? Uh, we, uh, after uh, last time we came, uh, we applied for a permit uh, within a week. Uh, we submit the paperwork to the city. Uh, it took uh, some time for us to hear from the city on it was approved or denied. Finally, the president came back to the city, find out there was a hole on the process because uh, they want us to submit uh, architectural drawings. So we, uh, we went back and hired uh, an architect uh, and signed a contract um, the 11th. Uh, so he's working on the, on the drawings right now so, okay, so we can bring it to, back to the city. I don't, we don't have a record of that. What are you talking about? I don't have a record of what he's talking about. I have uh, the documents here. Why was it up? Why was it um, applied under the uh, 1960? We submitted um, within a week from last month that we came, and, and then uh, yeah, speaking we to the went mic, back. Okay. Um, I don't have the sad day where we apply, but um, it was within a week. No, um, my question is why. Why was it applied under a different address, under 11960 Northeast 19 Drive versus 11930? That's my question. Because the address, um, the instruction permit is for the condo. The condo is the uh, responsible for fixing it. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, that's the address for the association uh, was applied under the uh, association's um, address. But it's related to... Uh, Master permit uh, 11930 unit third uh, on the on this document. I don't know if that's the same one. A 
Okay, yeah, um, I do see um, what he's referring to, just on the different address. That's what I didn't see. So basically, you can ask him how much time he need. And this is the contract for, with the architect. How much time do you need? Uh, the architect promised us by says that we should have the drawings so we can bring it to, to the city. Not tomorrow, but next week, the city will be, uh, the, the city should have the drawings uh, to continue the process. From that point, I don't know how long. Uh, maybe if you can give us another month uh, to get the permits uh, from the city. All right. We're ready to start work. We're July just waiting for the, for the permit. July 17th. Okay. Thank you, sir. The next case is 13033 Holdings Group, LLC. The case number is MHVIO 2018-01277. Gary Beswick is the officer. <coughs> Is anyone here for this property? Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Uh, my name is Ramiro. Uh, the address is 13033 Holdings Group. I'm the owner. Um, I just got this posted on one of my tenants' uh, door um, yesterday. Uh, we're working on the permits. Uh, the permit that we, we started on uh, the first one was the helping one of the tenants that needs some plumbing work and it's been applied for and we're waiting for the uh, the uh, plumber to to do his uh, to pull his permit on his side the sec th these two these two cases involve uh, sealing and restriping of the parking lot Yes. Uh, well, then we're talking a different, a different. And thing. just for clarification, he's fully aware of the violation because his permit runner came into our office and we discussed it. So he's fully aware of the violation. Okay. Um, so there's no objection to these violations. No, 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 no. We're working on the permits right now. How much time do you need? Um, there's several going at the same time. We also have a window one that is it's in process, but they came back with. They needed um, structural um, uh, plans. Just, just tell me how much time you need. It have nothing to do with the, dry, with the seal and um, striping. Just tell me how much time you need. Uh, 30 days. All right. Find that a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of July 10th. Uh, if not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day until abated. Same shall apply to the next case as announced by the clerk. Case number MHVI 2018-01278, found guilty by the magistrate, must abate by July 10th, fine set 250. The next case is 770 Condominium Associates, case number FYBRR 2018-00076, Gary Beswick is the officer. Is this the whole board? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just a bunch of owners. Just a bunch of owners. All right. Actually, I, I, I did notify all of them per our assistant attorney. <laughs> she says notice, notify everybody, so I did. Oh, okay. All right. Gentlemen, go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Marshall Weinberg, owner of four units at 770 Northeast 178th Street. 28th Street, I'm sorry. Is there an association? There's, that's the whole problem, sir. There is no association. When we all got these units, there was an association. The attorney absconded with all the funds, and they left us with zero. Now we have tried to collect as a group from the 15 owners, of which one-third of them owe us more than $50,000. They pay zero. We try, but there is no association, and they keep sending it to us as if we're the association. Because by law, the association has not yet been dissolved, so they have to. Once the association exists, it exists. And so the association not according to the state. State of guys? Florida, because they never paid their fees or whatever. Uh, there is no association. They let, they let their registration uh, go. God knows what they did. They left with all the funds. <laughs> And, and left the state. So there is no, and we're trying our best. We owe, we owe the city of North Miami 
$14,000 in water bills, which I personally have guaranteed will get paid after I can sell my units, but I can't sell my units because of these, because of the liens on the property, which I have personally guaranteed the liens on the property. And now we're coming up with this, and we don't even know what it's about. Your, your building is over 40 years old, and therefore it has to be recertified. Okay. How do you do that? Mr. Bez, Mr. Beswick will, will, will go through that with you guys, um, and I'll see you guys back on July 17th. Okay? Okay. Yes, come, oh, come on. Wait a come minute. Forward. Hold on one second. Come on. Um, hello. Can I extend it a little longer? Can I get two months, please? Already we talked to a uh, couple of uh, engineers, structure engineers. Sorry, you know what to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds like, yeah, but I say it sounds like he knows what to do. All right. Uh, uh, September 18th. Thank you. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thank All you. Right. You, had, you had a comment on this case? Hi, yes. Uh, my name is Gustavo Torre. I'm uh, one of the owners of the, um, in the building, the apartment 202. Okay. I just want to clear something. I'm going to use master later. There is an association uh, that all they have been doing is collecting money from uh, uh, from other members, and the they're not making their payments. Uh, so they're doing all they're doing is putting liens on our properties. Who's the association president? Quién es el presidente de la asociación? One of these guys that just left there. Like I said, there is no. We as a group have collected the money and we've been paying it out. This gentleman happens to be one of the the, the third that hasn't paid a penny and owes over fifteen thousand dollars. So I don't know what he's talking about. What I'm saying is that I have never paid any money to the association because they have never done anything. Up to today, up to this date, they have done nothing for the uh, property. That's why the building is all in disarray. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm going to leave that guy for you guys to work it out. All right? Thank you. The next case is Sheriff. another judge. <laughs> the next case is Sheriff Sanders, MHVI 2018-01273. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good morning. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Um, my name is Sherry Sanders. I live at 671 Northeast 139th Street, North Miami, Florida, 33161. I'm the owner of the property. Okay. You've been made aware of the violation, correct? Yeah. Uh, the violation of... You understand the violation? Yeah. I think... Yeah. I've, yes. Are there any objections to the violation? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Just real quick while Mr. Beswick is doing that, briefly, what's your object objection to the violation? Um, the violation that I'm aware of is that the day he came. Um, Here, here's, what I, here's what I understand. It's a, you, they're asking that you get a permit for bathroom renovations that are in progress now without a permit. Right. He came by the house, and there was some trash outside, and there was some stuff. My brother was there. Uh, he and a friend, they did a bathroom somewhere else. They came by to put in a, they had a vanity that they, they couldn't use. I needed a vanity. They came to put the vanity. It was in the truck. They pulled all the stuff out. They put the vanity in. When he came, that was in progress. I'm not even sure why they came by. Um, he said we were doing renovations. He never came in the house and saw any renovations. He saw the trash outside, and then he assumed it was renovations. And we told him there were no renovations. So you're just a victim of circumstance? I think so. No, we don't need a permit for a vanity, right? No, we don't.
He never even came inside the house. And my brother was there. And then the, the unfortunate thing is right now my brother's in jail. He's not getting out until October. So I have nobody to, you know what I'm saying? But he did. He came. Oh, sorry. He came. He heard the drill putting in the vanity. And he saw the trash outside. It was trash outside. Because they were going to put the trash on the swale to be picked up. But after he came, made a ruckus, I said, you know what? Just take all that stuff and put it somewhere else. And the vanity, um, we did put in. Um, when he said renovations, he didn't even he didn't say what renovations we were doing because he never came in. He put a stop permit of work, uh, stop work order or whatever it was. He put it on the door, but he did not ever come into the house. Okay, I got a complaint from the plumbing from our plumbing inspector. And when I went by the property, there was items outside that come from a bathroom. And basically, yeah, she right, I didn't go inside the house, but basically, if she, if she want to give, give us an inspe inspection so we can verify that, but all about you, I was in, in, in front of her house, next to her door, it was in the swale, it wasn't No, they didn't the put house. it in the swale. They never did, they, they and literally, there was work. go ahead. And work was, at, there was, the guy was working inside. Yeah, he was, he was putting in the vanity. And he told, my brother did tell you that we were not putting in any renovations. He did tell you that. Yeah, but I got to, I got to verify, but I got to. Why, why didn't you go in? To see, based on what I saw, um, the boxes for a tub and all that was right there. Yeah, it came out of the van. It did, because they had a vanity. I needed a vanity. They brought it over. It was in the truck. They put the stuff out. They asked me if they could put the trash, because they had just did a job before. And I said, okay. But then after he came, I said, you know what? Put it somewhere else. All right. Um, reset to the 17th. Yeah. By that time, he should be able to inspect. There was no other renovations other than the vanity. We're good to go. What what renovations are he is he referring to? Because how can he tell if tub was put in? I'm sorry. The bathroom. What part of the bathroom? The bathroom. No, no, no. That's too vague. That's too vague. It because no I've I've updated what, my bathroom before. What what in a, what what could, what has to be done to a bathroom in order for it to require a permit? A permit. You changing the tub. You retiling it. You move the the toilet bowl. The, I didn't move the, the toilet bowl. So if if none of those things have been done, and yes, a trained eye can tell if those things have been recently right. done. Okay. So if those things aren't haven't been done, then you're good to go. That's fine. What he said again? He said what? If you retiled it, if you changed out the bathtub, if you moved the toilet bowl, those things require permitting in the city of North Miami. All right? Okay. I All haven't right. moved the toilet bowl and I haven't changed the tub. I did retile it a while ago, but that was it. And the vanity, of course. All right. July 17th. Okay. When, wait, I'm sorry. When is he supposed to come look at it? Between now and July 17th. So he's going to I mean, me between now and, yeah, before July 17th. So what does this mean? You're gonna call me? He's, he, you can you can schedule. I think you guys you can schedule an appointment with him for him to come out and see it. Okay. The next case is Krista Nor Augustin, case number CEGMP 2019-00057. Vanessa Willis is the officer. Good morning. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Yes, my name is Chris Nor Augustin, from 122-33 Northwest Seventh Avenue. And that's it. All right. Uh, you understand the violation? Yes. All right. And do you object to the violation? No. How much time do you need? I need 60 days because I contact Geico. They say they're going to they're going to pay me for it. That's why I don't break it down yet. I don't want to take it off. And then he said, "Oh, everything done." All right. Find out the violation does exist. Society. Issue an abatement date of September 11th, not abated by September 11th, mm -hmm. then it's $250 per day until abated. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. The next case is David Mumby, case number MHVIO 2018-01294. Gary Beswick is the officer. Is anyone here on behalf of this property? Seeing none. Mr. Beswick. Good morning, Gary Beswick for the City of North Miami Building Department.
property was cited for enclosing a carport to a living space without a required permit. As of today, there is no permits on file. I have some photograph for you to look at. Notice, notice. Notice up here, notice up here was posted on the grill door on the 28th of May 2019 at 9.06 a.m. after they did have services on file. Having heard the testimony, evidence presented the property owner failing to appear after having had proper notice. Find that a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of July 10th. If not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day until abated. Dolores Nemhard, case number CEGMP 2018-00163. She's 70, so I do all the work around the house. What happened? I Vanessa broke my leg. Willis I, had is the officer. I had a hit and run over here on 14th. And I hit you. So I'm just, I was. You couldn't. got a power of attorney for it? From, for nah, me? I didn't even get a chance. It's on them, man. It's like a freebie right now, man. But I, was, I couldn't go up on a ladder because my leg was broke. So now I'm. Getting, I'm back on now. I'm getting now. I'm almost there to um, get up on the ladder and do the um, pressure clean of the house. You know, I usually do that. You know, just the rain been falling a lot, so it, it's it's not. It just sticks on the house in the dark parts, the patches of it. You know. All right, I'll reset it for July 17th. Could I get 60 days on that, sir? Is that possible? Uh, uh pre, sir. There, there's no rush for this, right? No, sir. No. All right, September 18th. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. God bless you. All Thank right. you so much. Okay. Thank you. I'll be back. back. The next case is Deutsche Bank, case number CEGMP 2018-00308, Vanessa Willis. So anyone here on behalf of this property? Seeing none, Inspector. Okay, Vanessa Willis, City of North Miami, Code Compliance Officer. Um, this particular case is to replace a deteriorated stucco and paint the building um you adjudicated and asked that they comply by june 12th and they have not complied at let, this time let the fines go forward thank you deutsche bank case number cemho 2018-00004 vanessa willis vanessa willis city of north miami code compliance officer um this particular case was in reference to the holes that were found throughout the property and they have not complied. You asked that they comply by June 12th, and they are not in compliance. Let the files go forward. Thank you. Next case, Deutsche Bank, case number MHVIO 2018-01259, Gary Beswick. It's previously adjudicated? Yes. Any compliance? No. Let the files go forward. Next case, Eric Vasquez, case number MHVIO 2018-01331. Gary Beswick is the officer. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. For Vasquez? Yes. I'm asking Mr. Beswick. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Hi, my name is Eric Vasquez. My property address is 1235 Northwest 124th Street. North Miami, Florida, that 33167. All right. You understand the violations that were issued? Um, they give me a violation because not pulling a permit on the driveway. So you, underst so you understand the violation? Mm, sort of, but I did pull a permit. Okay. So you object to the violation because you, you feel you comply with it? Well, I believe I did. Okay. I pulled a permit before I put the concrete on it. And this is for permits for concrete installation encroaching yes. into the setbacks without permits. So, so what they're saying is that the structure, the, the, com the concrete structure, violates the setbacks on the property, and you didn't get a permit in order to create to have that happen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, good morning, Gary Bess for City of North Miami. What he did, he did pull a permit, but what? But after the inspection, what he did, they went and expand on what they did and went into the setback, which they cannot do. Right. What does that back set mean? Set, setback. Setback. Oh, sorry. There's a portion of the property, it's a portion of your property that's, that's reserved that you can't encroach upon. So there's a portion of your property that that cement structure, mm -hmm. encro it, it, it goes over that line. So there's an imaginary line, the, that structure goes over that imaginary line, and mm -hmm. you can't go over the imaginary yeah, line. Yeah, pour the concrete right up to the fence line. Yeah, you can't do that. Oh, I, I, yeah. I didn't know. Our ordinances reserves. Did you did, did you have a contract to do it? 
Yeah. The contractor should have known. Oh. Well. Yeah, he's contracted should have said, no, you can't go that far. Why, why, why can I tell you? I mean, <laughs> sorry about that, but what can I tell you? I mean. Yeah, you got to you gotta fix it. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta take that structure out of the setback. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know how much of it is in the setback. A whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Your, your honor is uh, about a foot off from the uh, fence line, which. Yeah, but it may be. I don't know. That, you know it I may mean, be a foot or more into the setback, so. You need, to, you need to take that structure out of the setback. So however much you have to take off of the structure, you have to take that much off of the structure for it to be in compliance with ordinance. Can I do anything else to keep it? I mean, that's going to be, you know, it's going to cost me money, to be honest with you, and it's, it's going to cost, cost me, I mean, me. <laughs> I, I, I don't do any harm to the, to the neighbors as far as I'm concerned. Is that it's, the it's, case? It's, it's not about the harm that you're doing to the neighbors. It's about the fact that ordinance exists, that prevents you from doing what you did. And oh, you, okay, so what? Who can tell me what I can take, what I have to take off, or what I have to do? You can go to the zoning department. You can go to zoning and ask them if they give you a variance. But yeah, that's, that's where you can go. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. The, the only thing that can happen now is go to my go to the city zoning department and see if they'll allow you a variance. But I'm gonna tell you, I, I, I'm not hopeful. <laughs> That they'll give you a very Okay, so I'm going to try that. I mean, All right. there's nothing else I can do. All right, July 17th. <laughs> okay. The next case is Fandi Nasir, case number CESOD 2019-00018. Wayne Clark is the officer. Is anyone here on behalf of this property? Wayne, now, Clark. Clark. Wayne Clark, City of North Miami Code <laughs> Compliance. Uh, this case uh, was in reference to sodding the front yard of the property. Uh, I have yet to uh, make contact with the owner. Uh, the property um, was posted on, I believe it was May 28th, uh, with proper notice for this hearing of the day. I have talked to the lawn man. I have talked to the uh, tenants at the property to make him aware of the violation. And uh, the lawn man, you know, uh, said that um, the owner is not going to do it. He already know how he is. He's whatever he said, something about, you know, he's kind of frugal or whatever. He doesn't care too much about the property. So right now, to the date, I went back on my final inspection on May 12th and <coughs> it remains the same, even going back yesterday for an additional inspection. Nothing has changed and the owner has not made contact with the city in reference to the violation. All right. Having heard the testimony evidence presented the property under failing to appear without having proper notice, with, while having proper notice, find that a violation does exist as, as cited, issued an abatement date of July 10th, not abated by July 10th, and it's $250 per day until abated. The next case is Fritzer Noret, case number CEBPR 2019-00005. Jose Perez is the officer. Fritz and Red, 460 Northwest 135th Street, North Miami, Florida, 33168. Do you understand the violations with regards to the property? Yes. And are there object any objections to these violations? No, I got everything. How much time do you need? No, I don't need time. You got um, everything done? Yeah. Uh, So, yeah. Oh.
the first case is the zone prohibited use, correct? Okay, that one we could go ahead and close out it complied. No, it is not? Pilar? No, the first case I called into record is the BPR case. Oh, the BPR. For okay. the conversion of the efficiency. Okay, oh. so for the BPR case, uh, let's extend it. Um, she can get her evidence uh, in order, so I'll re inspect it and. Um, oh, one second. I'll go ahead and call the next case so I can dismiss it. Call their next case so I can dismiss it. The next case is CEZPU 2019-00014 for Fritzer Norette. And that case is dismissed as complied? <coughs> yes. Uh, yes, uh, so in reference to the uh, CEBPR, that case has also complied. It was reverted back to um, its, its original, original form. Current right. Thank you. Case dismissed. Thank you. Yep. The next case is Greater Properties LLC. Gary Beswick is the officer. The case number is MHVIO 2018-01292. Is anyone here on behalf of this property? Good morning, Gary Basic for the City of North Miami Building Department. The, the property was first cited back in November the 9th, 2018 for interior and exterior alteration and renovation of apartment number six in progress without permits. And as of this morning, there's no permits that has been obtained. Property was posted to a notice to appear on May 28, 2019 at 1.49 p.m. Affidavit of service is on file. Having heard the testimony Evans presented, the property owner failing to appear after having had proper notice, find that a violation does exist as cited, issued an abatement day of July 10th. Not abated by July 10th, and it's $250 per day until abated. The next case is Harry Allen Rackard, case number CEPFY 2019-00022. Karen Jean Lewis is the officer. Property owner, Harry Rackard, uh, address 1115 Northwest 133rd Street, 33168. All right. Mr. Mr. Rackard, you understand the violation? Yes, sir. And are you objecting to the violation? Yes, sir. Sound a little hesitant. Well, I understand it now. Uh, initially, I understand because of uh, the new policy, I guess you put in in 2015, 2013, you can't park your car in the front yard without it, uh, it being on a paveway. 
Uh, I've been there since 1990, so initially when I got it, I thought it was an error because of that. And at the same time, I had other uh, warnings that weren't my property, they were them property in back of mine. But uh, once I contacted the uh, city of North Miami, I've, I've been in contact with Vicki Santos and Karen Jean Lewis, and they explained everything to me. So, uh, yes, and you and you are, and so I did apply for the permit. Well, I had a contract to apply for the permit. Okay, and I've been in contact with them because I didn't know how it worked. Uh, I so found out it was denied by zoning and engineering. Okay. So I want to know, can I meet with someone to get a, a, a copy of the plans? Because that's what the, I'm, I'm thinking the plans were probably inaccurately drawn or something like that. Yeah, your contractor would be able to get, do that for you. But when I called him, I, I, I personally don't think he wants to do the job now because I told him that it was denied. He said they never gave him a, a, a permit number. So I gave him the permit number. And he still hasn't contacted me, and I told him I had to. I was uh, asked to uh, attend here today before you, yeah, so special go, magistrate. So. so go back to zoning and permitting, correct? Go back to zoning and permitting, and they'll let you know what's, what the issues are. Oh, right. Now, now I, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. As the property owner, do I get a copy of why it was denied or stuff like that? Or the you reason have. why it was denied, because they have one of the, it was two reasons why. It was uh, five feet away from the property line and had to start from there. They, they, typ they typically contact the contractor who applied on your behalf. Okay, okay. So, so if he doesn't... Uh, if he but doesn't it's your permit, so yes, you can go and get information on your permit. He just did it on your behalf, okay. but it's your permit, so you can get information. And where would I go for that, down to the building? Yes. Yes, to the building department. Are you the one I've been contacting? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, then, okay. All right. Um, I find out a violation does exist as cited, issue an abatement date of September 11th. If not abated by September 11th, then it's $250 per day until abated. That should give you enough time to figure it all out. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to need another contractor because he hasn't uh, been responsive at all. It's possible. Okay, then. All right. Thank you. That's it? That's it. The next case is for Hattie Lee Palmer, case number CEFAW 2019-00068. Vanessa Willis is the officer. Is there, anything, is there anyone on behalf of this property? Seeing none. Vanessa Willis, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. Um, this is a new case, Hattie Lee Palmer. Um, bear with me one second because my coworker is in the way. Basically, the uh, violation is to, um, to paint mm -hmm. the fence and the wall on the property. They painted the wall, but they didn't paint the fence. Well, I did make co um, contact with um, the property owner's son, said his mom is in a wheelchair and she's elderly, so forth and so on. Um, so I would ask for 60 days for compliance for that um, service. It was sent certified mail. It was also posted June 1st, um, 2019 at 12.20 p.m. Having other testimony evidence presented, the property owner failing to appear after having had a proper notice. Find out a violation does exist is cited. Issue an abatement date of, you said, wait a minute, you said June 1st? Was when I, when I posted the notice to appear. Okay. That's more than 10 days. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, I'm going to give them until September 11th to abate. If not abated by September 11th, then it's $250 per day until abated. The next case is Ingrid Bolera, case number MHVIO 2018-01345. Gary Beswick is the officer. There's no one here on behalf of this property. Or is there any, anyone here on behalf of this property? Seeing none.
this is not a this is not a new case. It's already been heard. Okay. Is there compliance? No, there's no compliance. Let the fines go forward. The next case is J and D Brothers, case number C E F O B twenty nineteen zero 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 four. Ernst Baptiste is the officer. Is there anyone here on behalf of that property? Seeing none. Need a continuance on this one? Yes. Well, ask for continuance. All right. Case reset till July 17. The next case is JNL Land Investments. Case number CESTR 2019-00006. Aaron Barber is the officer. Does anyone want to hear on behalf of this property? Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Juan Jermison and Liam Angelini, owners of uh, 1922 Northeast 119th Road in North Miami. I'm trying to see if we can request a continuance. We got a uh, we got certified mail by the end of business day yesterday, and uh, unfortunately, my attorney, uh, who was here last week, uh, uh, is was unavailable to come with us. So if we can get a continuance so we can uh, be properly represented, I'd appreciate it. If not, uh, we'll try our best to move forward. Was this posted? Yes, sir, this was posted. When was it posted? You said this was previously heard, and your attorney attorney appeared on your behalf. It was on a on a different violation. We were able to get that resolved in our favor. All right, reset to July seventeenth. Thank, Thank you, you. Your Honor. Appreciate you. Thank you. Your Honor. Next case is Jose Antonio Iglesias Aleman, case number MHVIO 2019-00002. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good morning, Juan Carlos Sanchez, attorney on behalf of the property owner, Jose Iglesias, 2381 Bayview Lane, North Miami, Florida, 33161. Has your client been consulted with regards to the violation? Yes. Is there any objection to the violation? Um, we believe we know what we need to do to comply. I spoke to Gary before the hearing uh, yesterday, I believe it was, either Monday or Tuesday. Um, we spoke about getting an extension. Um, I would respectfully ask if we could have 60 days, if that's okay with Gary. That's fine. All right. Uh, September. I'm going to adjudicate it. Yeah. I'm going to adjudicate it. Find out a violation does exist as cited, issued an abatement date of September 11th. Not abated by September 11th, and it's $250 per day until abated. Thank you. Thank you. The next case is Juan Rafael Alegria, case number CEWWC 2019-00041. Karen Jean Lewis is the officer. Go ahead and make your appearance. Yes, my name is Juan Alegria. I am the owner, 920 Northeast 137 Street, uh, North Miami, Florida, 32161. Okay. You understand the violation? Yes, I am working on that. I went, the, I went to the city the last week. How I get the application for the roof. How much time you need? I don't know how long I'm going to get the, the city for giving me the permit because I had to bring that paper to the notary or something like that. But then right. I got to go to the downtown for... I right. find out a violation does exist to cite it. Issue an abatement date of September 11th. If not abated by September 11th, then it's $250 per day until abated. All right? September 11th. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. The next case is Julian Aduris, case number MHVIO 2018-01332. Gary Beswick is the officer. Go ahead, ahead and make your appearance for the record. My name is Julian Aduris. The address is 235 Northeast 124th Street, North Miami, 33161. Oh, no. Okay. You understand the violations that were issued? Yes. And are you objecting to any of the violations? The, uh, I already appeared, and they told me to uh, Did you get fix the, the violations, so I'm doing it. I hired the, the contractor. So you need more time? 
Uh, no, everything has been done. I apply for after the fact permit, but I cannot do it myself. After the fact, only the contractor can do it. I try to call for a, an inspection many times because everything has been done. I have the permits, the architectural permits, the contractor, all the load calculations. I've done everything I could. I guess it only needs to be inspected. It's incorrect. And as I try to explain it to him when I spoke to him on the phone, Good morning, Gary Bezik for the city of North Miami building department. The property was, the property was cited for permits for interior and exterior alteration and renovation in progress without permit. They apply for garage conversion and interior renovation, windows, concrete slab, and main split. Application was submitted on February 13, 2019. Then it was signed out and it's at Durham, so we don't have it, it's at Durham. So I'm um, seeking adjudication and give them a payment date for September 11th. All right. I, I didn't understand what you said. Would you, would you feel com more comfortable with an interpreter? No, no. Why you I, I didn't understand him. It's okay. So you applied for the permit, but those permits have to also be reviewed by Durham, which is an outside agency. Huh. And so that outside agency has not returned those <coughs> with approval yet. Okay, so you need additional time, all right? So that's why you can't get an inspection because you don't have full approval yet, all right? And with I, that- I have another question for you. I have incurred in all these uh, troubles myself because my, the street I live on is the only one in my neighborhood that doesn't have drainage. There is no storm drainage on my street and the on, on North East Second um, by the canal. Okay. Every other street has 11 storm drains at 11, five I counted, I mapped them, I have a map, okay. except for my street. So um, I did the uh, driveway to avoid the garage floating in my garage. After the driveway was done, I spent $7,000. Well. The water keep going into my um, garage. Right. So I hired this architect, I thought he was gonna pull the permits, he didn't. I spent $8,000 on these uh, architectural plans to uh, enclose the garage, to put a, a window where the, the garage door was. You're still in the permitting process. Yeah, okay. but I, I have mailed the city. Uh, Rick Keith is the person that has been receiving my emails. It's still no storm drain has been installed on my street. That's that's beyond me. That's 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 not for this body to hear. Okay, that's a different. Can part the, of the city, city of North Miami help? No. Yeah, I mean they can, but that's not for here. Okay. okay. Um, so yes, finding a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of September 11th. If not abated by September 11th, then it's two hundred and fifty dollars per day until abated. That should give you that should give you some time. If if it's not done by then, you'll be back before me on September 18th, and we'll see what, where we're at. All right. I I have the uh, the contract with the constructor. Yeah, that's between the you, general. That's that's between you and the contractor. You guys figure it out. All right. There's nothing I can do. I've hired this guy on on December 12th. Okay. Right after the that's, first hearing. But that's who you hire, so that's who you have to kind of deal with it with. If you can't deal with it with him, then you probably need to hire somebody else. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. The next case is Klaus Haas LLC, case number FYBRR 2017-00038. Gary Beswick is the officer. No one is anyone here on behalf of this property? Hearing none, seeing none, Mr. Beswick. Good morning, Gary Beswick for the City of North Miami Building Department. The property was first notified for 40 year recertification on July the 12th, 2017. There was given an extension. As of today, we have not received um, the 40 year research, so we need an adjudication. Right. 
But it was posted notice to appear on May 28, 2019 at 12.40 p.m. after the of services and file. Having heard the testimony of evidence presented to property owner failing to appear after having had proper notice, finding a violation does exist as cited. Issuing abatement day of July 10th. If not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day until abated. The next case is La Puerta Life Center, case number MHVIO 2018-01149. Gary Beswick is the officer. Is there anyone here on behalf of this property? Seeing none, hearing none. Good morning, Gary Bezik for the City of North Miami Building Department. The property was first signed on July 2nd, 2018 for permits for interior demolition and renovation in progress without permit. As of today, there is no permit has been obtained. Property was, so this was, property was posted for notice to appear on May 28, 2019 at 8.33 a.m. After the date of service is on file. Having heard the testimony evidence presented the property owner failing to appear after having had proper notice, find that a violation does exist as cited, issued abatement date of July 10th, not abated by July 10th, and it's $250 per day until abated. The next case is Leslie Betty, case number MHVIO 2018-01333. Gary Beswick is the officer. Does anyone want to hear on behalf of this property? Seeing none, hearing none. Violation abated. Compliance. All right, case dismissed. The next case is Long Island Apartments, case number MHZCU 2019-00001. Gary Beswick is the officer. Anyone here on behalf of that property? Good morning. Go Good ahead and make your appearance. Good morning, Mercedes Carcasses. Manager for Valencia. For Long Island. The mic got, yeah. got the mic. Hi, how are you? Good morning. The reason we're here is actually we're trying to ask for an extension. We have been working. Um, we, um, we applied for the certificate of use. We have some doors that we still need permits, but we were running the plans. Um, it stayed with the building department for two weeks, and now we have it at the fire department. So I'm asking for 30 to 45 days, please. All right. Having heard the testimony of us presented, Sorry. property owner failing to. <laughs> um, find out a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of July 10th. Not abated by July 10th. Then it's $250. Thing was heard already. This was, it was? previously heard. Well, it was previously heard. Oh, okay. July 17th then. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Right. Thank you very much. And, Your Honor, just to let you know, reference the, one of the cases you had here. Um, the property appraiser has permits for the houses and for the docks, and so does Durham. The next case is Lourdes Vasquez, MHVIO 2018-01229. This was complied by the officer. The next case is Luisa Valentine, case number CERCV 2019-00053. Shanna Sanders is the officer. Is anyone here on behalf of this property? Seeing none, hearing none. Shanna Sanders, City of North Raymond, co compliance officer. I did um, make contact with the property owner. Um, I'm going to ask that this case be tabled. I want to give her a little more time in order to get apply for the variance. All right, September 18th. Thank you. The next case is Mariella Padron. Case number CERCV 2018 uh, Ernst Baptiste is the officer. The city is requesting for this to be postponed, tabled. 30 days? 
30 days. July 17th. The next case is MB and CS Investors, CEFAW 2019-00074, Ernst Baptiste. Postponed. I believe 17th. that one is being postponed as well. July 17th. <laughs> case uh, MB and CS Investors, MHVIO 2019-00046, Jerry Beswick. So you don't want to hear on behalf of this property. Seeing none, hearing none. Good morning, Gary Basic for the City of North Miami. This was previously adjudicated and there's no compliance. Let the fine go forward. Next case, MB and CS Investors, RCCOR 2019-00015, Gary Beswick. This case was previously heard. There's no compliance. Let the fine go forward. Thank you. Mar LLP, case number FYBRR 2018-00062. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Uh, Max Mochilov, partner of Miar LLP, 13200 North Sea 7 Avenue. All right. You understand the, the uh, violation? Yes. Any objection to the violation? No. How much uh, time do you need? 60 to 90 days. Find out a violation does exist. Society issued abatement date of September 11th. Not abated by September 11th. It's $250 per day until abated. Orestes Machado, case number MHVIO 2018-01286. Gary Beswick is the officer. Go ahead and make your appearance. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Orestes Machado, uh, 13200 Biscayne Bay Drive, North Miami. 33181. All right. Do you understand the violation that was issued? Yes. Is there any objection to the violation? No. How much time do you need? Uh, 60 days. Find out, a find out a violation does exist. It's cited. Issued an abatement date of September 11th. Not abated by September 11th. And it's $250 per day until abated. Thank you. Thank you. PM2 Construction LLC. Case number MHVIO 2019-00003. Gary Beswick is the officer. Hello. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Go ahead and make your appearance for the yes, record. Yes, my name is Masood Hajali. I'm the owner of the property. And uh, we submitted the plans to the city like six months ago, and they just got approved all t yesterday. Yesterday I was in the city, and it was missing a, a work compensation insurance mm -hmm. for the construction uh, contractor. So I, I'm going to take it tomorrow, pick up the master permit, and uh, start working. This is new, Gary? E yes. Um, All right, find out a violation yes. does exist at site. Issue an abatement date of July 10th. If not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 oh, per can day. Can you please abated. give me more time? Because the plans just got approved yesterday, and we didn't want to do any job before the plans get approved. So by July All you had to do was obtain the permit. So was, when the permit is issued, then it's abated. No, because we were remodeling the interior, and now because I had to hire an engineer, pay the fees and stuff, I decided to convert the garage to a bedroom as well. So now, in including the uh, remodeling for the in interior, I'm converting the garage too, so. All you have to do is obtain the permits. The permits is satisfaction of the violation. Okay. All right? Yeah. All right, thank you. Rachel Cadet Trust, case number CEPKS 2019-00003, Ernst Baptiste is the officer. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go yes, ahead and state uh, your, make your appearance for the record. I'm Jules Cadet. 620 Northeast 128th Street. And also there is another case for 12670 West Dixie. We'll get, we'll, we'll get to it. On this, partic on this particular case, uh, have you complied? Special oh yes, there is one, yeah. Uh, for the 126, yes, complying. No, 620. For 620, I just find out yesterday. All right. And uh, you want to reset? I would. Yes. Uh, all right, we're going to reset to next month. All right. No, 60 days. Huh? All right, September. Well, if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to adjudicate. All right. So, uh, find out a violation does exist as cited. Issued abatement date of September 11th. Not right. abated by September 11th, and it's $250 per day until abated. All right. All right. Uh, the other one we're going to call in a minute, all right? 
We we'll call that other one in a minute. Unfortunately, unfortunately, right now we don't have the ability to skip around like that. All right. All right. Just have a seat, and we'll call in that. We'll call that case momentarily. Okay. All right. Next case. The next case is Ready Real Estate RCCOR 2018-00003. Gary Beswick is the officer. This was previously adjudicated. Mm -hmm. Mr. Beswick, do we have compliance? No. No. There's no compliance. How much additional time you need? Uh, Your Honor, I, uh, we, 30 days should be enough, but I, I really would like to get to be 45 or 60 days. Um, the, the, the plans are on Durham now. We haven't been able to get them back yet. There, there were additional comments. And not only that, Last weekend, uh, this is uh, aside from the fact, last weekend our, ar our architect received a phone call from her family members outside the country. She has to travel in an emergency. Her father has terminal cancer, and I, I do believe this is going to delay uh, the process. We can She's do September 11 because it's vacant. This is it's a vacant property. All right, September 18. Okay. September 18. Thank you very much. The next case is Sidama Investments, CEPAC 2019-00002. Karen Jean Lewis is the officer. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is uh, Will Nefertilian, uh, the owner of the property. Um, what's your position with Sidama Investment and Development? I'm the owner <coughs> of... Uh, of that company? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, you understand the violation that was issued? Yes, Your Honor. Do you need objection to that violation? No, Your Honor. How much time do you need? Uh, 30 days will be okay because uh, I have the permit and, okay. and, uh, and pending. All right, great. Find out a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of July 10th. If not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day until abated. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Sylvain and Moise Legger. Case number MHVIO 2018-01090. Gary Beswick is the officer. Hi, Sylvain Ledger, property owner, 446-48 Northeast 141st Street. All right. You understand the violation that was issued? I do understand the violation. No objections. I just uh, need more time. That's all. How much? As much as you can give me. I right, find out a violation does exist. It's cited. Issue an abatement date of September 11th. Not abated by September 11th. And it's $250 per day until abated. Thank, Thank you. The Leeward Condo, MHVIO 2018-01349. Gary Beswick is the officer. Is anyone here on behalf of this property? Anyone here on behalf of this property? Hearing not seeing none. Good afternoon, Gary Bezik for the City of North Miami Building and Zoning. The property was first cited on December 20th, 2018 for failure to obtain a required permit for installing, installing tile flooring in the hallways without a permit. Um, they, they applied for a permit, but they haven't got it as yet, they haven't got approval, it was denied. Uh, we will need a, a adjudication. The Property was posted to notice to appear on May 28, 2019 at 8.24 a.m. Affidavit of service is on file. <coughs> having heard the testimony evidence presented, the property known to failing to appear after having had proper notice. Find out a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of July 10th. Not abated by July 10th. Then it's $250 per day until abated. Three Horizons North Condo, MHVIO 2018-01207. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good afternoon, Joanna Martinez for 1470 Northeast 125th Terrace, property manager, um, requesting an extension. We've already contracted um, a contractor to do the work, so just requesting so they can pull the how permit. Much additional time do you, how much time do you need? 90 days. Right. Find out a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of September 11th. Not abated by September 11th, and it's $250 per day until abated. Cool. Thank you. 
Three Kings on 135th, CENUS 2018 02606. Officer Vanessa Willis. This case was previously adjudicated. Good afternoon. Go ahead and make your appearance. Hi, my name is Sergio Quinones. I'm the property manager for Three Kings on 135th Street. All right, do we have compliance? Uh, not yet. We have a delay. Um, How much additional time do you need? If you can give me 60 days, it will be wonderful. Any objections? No. N no. September 18th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Venice Park Gardens, MHVIO 2018 01330, Gary Beswick. Go ahead and make your appearance. Uh, Frank Navarrete, uh, 18443 Southwest, 88th Place. And uh, I'm the contractor that's been hired to take care of this. And the owner understands the uh, violation? Yes, he does. Any objection? Did he, voice, he or she voice any objection to the violation? The violation. Uh, Hi, I'm, oh. Linda. I'm Linda Johnson, the property manager for the condominium. Okay. I'm just here to s make sure that the owner is complying. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you, Linda. <laughs> nice to meet you, Frank. All right. Uh, um, my understanding, it was uh, an emergency repair. How much time do you so need? So as much as possible. I've got plans uh, and the works as we speak. So. All right. Having heard the testimony, evidence presented. Find the violation does exist. It's cited. Issued an abatement date of September 11th. Not abated by September 11th. That's two hundred fifty dollars per day until the The next case is Thank Vetiver you. LLC, case number MHVIO twenty eighteen zero one two six six. The officer is Gary Beswick. Anyone here on behalf of this property? Seeing none, hearing none. Good afternoon, Gary Bezik for the City of North Miami Building Department. The property was first cited on October the 9th, 2018 for installing a commercial hood to the deck of the second floor without first obtaining required permit. As of today, there is no permit has been applied or obtained. After the date of service was on a property, the property was posted to a notice to appear on Tuesday, May 28, 2019 at 8.20 a.m. Having heard the testimony and evidence presented, the property on the filling to appear after having had proper notice. Find that a violation does exist in sighting. Issued an abatement date of July 10th. Not abated by July 10th. And it's $250 per day until abated. The next case is Walter Martinez, case number MHVIO 2018 01208. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, is possible interpreter? In Spanish? Okay. All right, no problem. We'll pass, him, we'll pass it till he gets back. All right? Okay. The next case is Yolette Mildor, case Th number CEGMP 2019-00045. Ernest Baptiste is the officer. Yeah, this, table, uh, this is going to be table for 30 days. All right, July 17th. Thank you. Condo? Yeah. Right. For Leeward. Okay. Yeah. What, what do we do on that? We are Adjudication. Right. This is for permits for installing tile floors yes. in the yeah. hallway. I have plans for permit for in process. Not yet. I, I haven't called that into record. Do you, you want did, you to did. go with your old adjudication? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Need adjudication. So yes. that was a that was found guilty. She must have by July 10th, and a fine set was two hundred and fifty dollars. Do you need more time than July 10th? Yes, please. All right, September 11th. Okay. okay. Thank you. Someone's helped the young lady right there? 
the new adjudication for Leeward Condo MHVI 02018-01349 was changed from July 10th to September 11th of an abatement date. Thank you. Has someone helped the young lady? And let's call back Mr. Uh, Martinez. Wal Walter Martinez, case number MHVI 02018-01208. Gary Beswick is the officer. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. what is it? Go ahead and make your appearance for the record again. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Walter Martinez. Good afternoon, my name is Walter Martinez. Mi residencia es 1030. Norris y la 32 Street, North Miami, Florida, 33161. My address is 1030 Northeast, 132nd Street, North Miami, Florida, 33161. All right. Uh, do you understand the violation that was issued? Entiende usted la, <coughs> la notificación de eh, irregularidad que le han enviado? Sí. Yes. Do you have any objection to that violation? Se, usted se... ¿Tiene alguna objeción a esa notificación? Mm, sí, lo, lo que quiero hacer, la voy, voy a, tú sabes, como florado, tirarlo y volver a sacar un permiso para hacerlo, ¿no? Yes, what I would like to do is tear down what I have done and then obtain a permit to redo it okay, uh, again. How much time do you need? ¿Cuánto tiempo necesita? El tiempo necesario que me quieran dar. Mm, whatever time you uh, might deem necessary to be, uh, issue me. All right, find out a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of September 11th. If not abated by September 11th, then it's $250 per day until abated. Okay, gracias. Okay, from September 11th. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Gracias. Thank you, everybody. Is this there anything else to come before the special magistrate? That concludes all the items on the agenda. All right. Here is a hereby adjourn. Oh, 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 I'd like to make a correction to. Oh, okay. Reopening? Here yes. Is. All right. For case number. I need image. the name. I need the name. Oh, um, Lourdes Vasquez. Okay, Gary, go ahead. Um, it was comply. Violation abated. Case dismissed. Thank you. That's Lourdes Vasquez on MHVIO 2018-01229. The ruling is changed to dismissal. If there's nothing else to come before the special magistrate, hearings are hereby adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. You're welcome, I called Yana. that one into record already. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. When I was going. It's okay. It doesn't oh, matter. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah.